Welcome everyone. Trust that you're enjoying what we're learning from the life of Deborah and the battle that she was engaged in. Uh, today we're going to look at the fact that the battle was to be fought not just by one individual. Deborah could have um, tried to chase after Sisera and get him all by herself, but that's not what she did. When she heard the word of the Lord, she called upon the commander in charge at that time, Barak. And it was his responsibility to take the army for battle. So he set out chasing um, Sisera and that's something we read about. And um, once Sisera sort of wanders away from Barak's control, we notice that there is a very unassuming lady by the name of Jael or Jael, whichever way you want to pronounce her name. Uh, she was but a homemaker and uh, she was aware of the situation. She was aware of the kind of oppression her people were living in, uh, in those times. And so she was ready to fight a battle. Even an ordinary person uh, in that community was ready to fight for the freedom and um, uh, you know the, the dignity of uh, her people. And so she comes into the picture and we see uh, as Deborah proclaimed it was uh, this lady called Jael who actually won the uh, victory for uh, the children of Israel. So the passage from Judges chapter 4 verses 8 and 9 it reads uh, and Barak said to her, If you will go with me, then I will go. But if you will not go with me, I will not go. So she said, I will surely go with you. Nevertheless, there will be no glory for you in the journey you are taking. For the Lord will sell Sisera in the hand of a woman. Then Deborah arose and went with Barak to Kadesh. So, you know, you notice here an entire teamwork that is playing out, everybody doing their part and not really comparing with one another. Uh, that's something for us to look at and um, uh, learn from. We are here to serve God together. Yes, there are certain things that we probably can do all by ourselves in the kingdom of God, but invariably God has placed us here together with people and we are here to do our part and also see others do their part. You know, uh, Paul actually wrote this in um, 1 Corinthians 3 verse 6. He said, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So uh, different people doing their bit. And also the other thing that we can understand about working together is the fact that everyone is gifted differently. Everyone carries a different grace. And we also see that it is God who has chosen, appointed and um, you know given us the grace to bear fruit. So we must be encouragers of one another and also recognize that we are all here to serve the purposes of God together. And as 1 Corinthians 12 you know, talks about us being parts of the body of Christ, you know, different ones of us all being um, you know, one body and all being very, very important parts of this body. You know, we must remember that uh, each one of us is irreplaceable and we must do what God has called us to do and it really benefits and edifies the entire body. So church, let's have an open heart to serve God together with others who are in the kingdom of God or the body of Christ. Shall we pray together? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your family. Father, we thank you for brothers and sisters. Lord, we thank you for believers in Christ Jesus. And Lord, even as you empower each one with a certain grace and the anointing of the Holy Spirit, we pray that together we will all work for the expansion of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for tuning in to Living Supernaturally. For more resources to strengthen your spiritual walk, please visit apcwo.org.